Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A new presentation as I promised you to start uh, describing what's the quality journey. And in the first presentation of the quality journey, we talked about the quality department, the quality officer, how to develop a job description, who's responsible for job description, and what about organizational chart. Today, we are talking about a very important issue uh, for the quality department and even for the hospital leaders and department, which is the strategic plan. So we will discuss today the strategic plan, and this is me, Dr. Muhammad Tabib. Our objectives today will be the basics of strategic plans, some rules, some definitions about strategic planning, how to develop a good vision and mission statement for your organization and even values, assessing internal and external environment through uh, identifying strengths, weakness, opportunities, and the threat of your organization uh, through SWAT analysis or SWAT analysis or even PEST analysis, identifying your facility goals and objectives, what's the difference between goals and objectives, and how to develop goals, how to develop objectives, then how to put an action plan, and what about the operational plan and the related CBI standards to the uh, strategic planning. So we'll give here some basics for strategic planning, like rules, like definitions. And the main rule here is if you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. If you did not put in a good plan, this is a plan to fail. So try to put a correct, uh, uh, implementable plan so you can succeed. The big picture of what your agency is doing and where it's going is the strategic plan. The strategic plan will help to determine where your organization is going over the next, next year or more than one year. And we will discuss later on for how long we can prepare a strategic plan. The definition of strategic planning is it, a systematic process of envisioning a desired future and translating this vision into broadly defined goals or objectives and a sequence of steps to achieve them. In brief, we are planning to prepare some goals, objectives, something we are intended to uh, uh, prepare and to achieve in the next few years of life and the steps to achieve them. This is the strategic plan. Another definition for a strategic planning is a visionary process that results in major long range or long term and far reaching strategic directions or goals for the futures. We are preparing for the futures through preparing long-term and even some short-term uh, 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 goals and objectives. What are the steps we are using to develop a strategic plan? I will make it very easy to you. Number one, you have to develop mission, vision, value statement. How? I will give you here the definition of each one and an example for a mission, vision, value. What's the vision? The vision is a clear understanding of what you are preferred future. What do you like to be in your future? What's your dream? Your dream, you, what you are looking for, this is your vision. What you are dreaming with, this is your vision. But the mission is developing a sound statement about you exist, the reason for existence, why you are here, what we are doing here. The values describes the behaviors and the ideas that are important to your organization, like ethics, like moral, what we are doing things here, what are the main ethics here, how could we behave here is the values. Let's give you one example here for the mission vision value. A vision example, we are, and you have to mention, where are you? What's your facility doing? You're a primary hostel, you're a specialized hostel, you're a tertiary hostel, you're a primary health care center, will be on the best, one of the best hostel PHCs in our region, country, or the world. So my dream is to become the best of my kind. So this is the vision. What about the mission? We give example here again. We are as a primary specialized tertiary hostel committed. So vision, what we will be, what we are dreaming to be. But the mission is what we are commitment, what we will do here, what we shall do here to provide primary, as we said, advanced level of care to our customer. And you have to define here your customers. 
especially area of service coverage. With the best available resources and any additional activities you have, you have to put it, like with educational uh, support or educational activities or training activities or community uh, services we are doing. So the mission is we are committed to provide the people in our coverage area with a good or excellent services with our available resources. And if you have any additional service or activities, you can add it here. What about values? As we said, it's a behavior, it's the morals, it's the ethics. You can put a lot of things here, but I'm giving you here some examples like Islamic rules, teamwork, transparency, safety. You can put here also uh, whatever like accountability, responsibility, uh, patient care, whatever you like here to put here, you can uh, put here in the so step number one, developing a mission vision value. Step number two, assessing the environment. The environment here is divided into internal environment inside your facility and external environment outside your facility. But both of them will affecting the services you are introducing. We have a lot of uh, uh, methods to, to assess the environment. Uh, the, the most famous of them is the SWOT analysis, SWOT. Some people would prefer to call it SWOC analysis, SWOC, and another will prefer to call it SWOP analysis, SWOP. SWOT analysis S for strengths, W for weakness, O for opportunities, T for threats. Some people in quality doesn't like the, the word threats, so they will change it to C, which is challenges. So instead of threats, we will put challenges. Another prefer to call it barriers barriers or barriers to success. So all of is the same, SWOT, SWOG, and SWOG. We will explain them here. Should be done in a meeting or more. Never ever give the SWOT analysis or SWOG analysis to somebody to do it, or the strategic plan as it all. Don't give it to the hostel director, for example, to develop it, or quality director, or a, a safety officer, or a quality officer to do it, or a physician. Never ever do it. You should do it in more than one meeting. A lot of people, attendees, have to come sit in the same table discussing the uh, mission, vision, value, the SWOT analysis, the goals, the objectives. Every steps they have, every step they have to uh, discuss and to have a consensus over them. Who are the attendees to do the strategic planning? Hostel leaders like hostel director, medical director, departmental heads whatever clinical or administrative, some selected staff, again, clinical and non-clinical staff, quality professionals, of course, because they know the quality tools, somebody from the directorate or from the cluster, they will help you and tell you what are the resources available to you and they can approve it for you. The strategic planning is ranging from two to five years. Some hostel will do it for two years, another for three years. Some people will do it to four years. Some people will do it from two to five years. But we have to revise it year by year. What's achieved in that year and what we have to achieve in the next year and so on. Don't forget to develop yearly operational plan and we will talk in about uh, operational plan later on. So still we are assessing the environment, the SWOT analysis. As we said, the, there is assessing for the internal environment. Two things are internal inside the facility. Strength points, weakness points. So strength and weakness are inside the facility. We will call them internal environment. Opportunity and the threats or challenges or barriers, we will call them opportunity and the threats. We will call them external environment. I have to mention one very important thing here. You cannot mention one item in the strength point and in the weakness point. For example, don't say that we have enough stuff at the, at the point of strengths. And at the same time in the weakness, you can say we have shortage of the stuff. Cannot be. I will uh, uh, accept it in the next slide. I'm going to give you here very simple example. I just uh, invented it or put it here. You can take benefit of them, you can change them, you can uh, add, you can erase, it's up to you. So strength points in one hostel is leadership support, internal, qualified staff, 
staff are qualified i did not talk about the number so far so qualified staff this means they have a good certificate of uh, education of experience of uh, 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 college and so on his is a strength point which is a health information system equipment and the machines we have here a good equipment inside our hostel like mri like ct scan like digital uh, 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 mri or digital x-ray and so on what are the weakness point examples shortage in some specialists so here i did not talk about the qualification qualification was a strength point but here the number we have shortage uh, shortage in some specialists like respiratory therapist in almost all hostel like uh, people working in csd central uh, sterilization units high turnover rate the people are uh, 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 leaving our uh, hostel too much one year two years three years and then they leave a uh, tight budget we don't have uh, that loose budget that big budget we can uh, 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 buy anything that we like insufficient car parking area the car parking are not good so they, those are weak points inside our facility what are the opportunity outside the hostel and we can take benefit of them example moh or directorate support nearby referral hostel we have a hostel close to us we can refer the uh, uh, big or problematic cases to them agreement with the private sector we have agreement with the private sector to send some people to them if we don't have that specialities or that uh, uh, resources nearby advanced training center we can send our people to be trained there threats threats means it can affect us negatively so opportunity it can affect us positively we can do uh, those things with the, the people and take benefit of the opportunity but the threat it can affect us unless we do some uh, solution for that threats example patient flow of visitors or highway victim if you, our hostel is close to highway so we have a lot of patient with RTA road traffic accident, it can affect us. We need some uh, 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 rare specialities. We need some instrument. We need uh, more than one OR uh, operating room. Close to malaria pandemic area, we are closing to an area uh, with pandemic uh, uh, problem like malaria. So we have a lot of cases of malaria. And as you know, it's a, a, a case with uh, multiple complications. It affects us. It needs some uh, something in the lab, some uh, resources in the lab, and private sector salaries. The the private sector around us are giving too much big salaries, so people will quit from us and they will go to the private sector. All those things could be a threat. So after we finish the mission vision values and the uh, 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 environmental analysis, number three, step number three is developing goals and objectives. We will explain here what the difference between goals and the objective, and we will give an example for goals and objectives. The goals. A goal is a specific statement of a desired result to be achieved over a specific period of time. They shape the way ahead in actionable terms. So the main uh, uh, intention of us is the goal. What about the objectives? Objective and objective is a measurable statement or incremental milestone which specify a change or benefit that the entity hopes to achieve as it strives to achieve a specific goals. So the goals are the broad things and the objectives are small. So for example, we will take some very big goal to act on, then we will divide it or the steps to achieve this goal, we will call them objectives. We will divide the goals into small objectives. Then we will put action plan for each objective. By the end of finishing all the objectives, we will reach the goals we are intended to do. Again, objectives should be smart. Goals should be smart. Objectives should be smart. Smart is a short term for S for specific. Everything you have to write should be specific. Do not write something vague. M for measurable, we can estimate them. A, attainable, we can do it. Uh, R for realistic, it's something not imaginary. We, we can do it on the ground floor. T, time bounded, we will not leave it open. For example, we will improve the patient safety culture in our hostel. When? Today? Tomorrow? Within a month? Within a year? Within a six years? So it should be time bounded with a specific time limit. Action plan. Action plan is the specific steps. The steps to do something is the action plan. 
steps should be done on fixed time by a particular person or group or committee with some monitoring for the achievement. We will call this one action plan. So if you want to do action plan, just to make a simple table, both the item or the step you want to do, who will do it, how he will do it, the due date or the end time, it's permit, uh, permission to him to do it, and how can you make sure that it's happening. Again, developing the goals and objectives. We start with goals, objectives, initiatives. Then we will do action plan. Let's give one example or some example for some goals. Goal number one, statement, enhancing patient safety culture amongst staff within six months. We did not explain here what to do, only what we are desiring to do. This is the main broad thing we will call goal. Goal number two, improve training and education process and the outcome within a year for our staff. Three, improving services introduced to cardiac patient by opening CC unit, cardiac uh, unit within two years. Four, enhancing patient rights and responsibilities within 12 months. Five, enhancing staff retention within 18 months. This is examples for goals. Let's uh, transfer now the goal to objective. Let's take goal number one, enhancing patient safety culture amongst staff within six months. Objective number one, estimate the basal level line of patient safety culture within 30 days. So through 30 days, I will estimate what's the level, baseline level of uh, patient safety in our facility. How to do it in something close to uh, action plan. Just to put the activity, do date responsibility. Some people, and I'm one of them, uh, prefer to add one more column is evidence of compliance. How can I know that it's done already? Uh, 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 some kind of monitoring. So the activities here is develop safety culture survey. Let's put any date here. Who will do it? Quality committee or safety officer. Detect the desired population sample because I cannot give the uh, survey to all the people inside the facility. So I will choose a sample, population sample. Then I will send the survey to them. Then I will receive the results, analyze them and uh, start to put an action plan. Objective number two is develop and execute an enhancing plan within a month. Again, steps do that responsibility. For example, I will do six presentation on patient safety to all the staff about international patient safety goal. Who will do it? Quality manager, safety officer, and the board do that. Awarding anyone will report to OVR or near mess or central event. So we will raise the culture of patient safety. Where? When, sorry, when, monthly, by the quality committee or hostel director or anyone. Monitoring of the staff compliance with the safety standards, I will do the monitoring with the checklist. I will go to check uh, are the people are compliance with the safety standard of Sibahi or any accreditation body or not, through three months, for example. And the last is developing KPIs for patient safety, analyze them and to improvement. So now we're changing, we change the goals into objectives and objectives action plan. Step number four, now we have to do operational plan. What's the operational plan? Operational plan should be taken from the strategic plan, but only the goals and the objective intended to be done through that year. So we will do operational plan for one year. As we said, strategic plan is from two to five years. I will to take all the goals and objectives I'm intended to do through one year. I will put them in an operational plan exactly like the action plan. For example, in the first month of the year, we will do like this, like this, like this. In the second month, we'll do like this, like this, like this. It could be mixed from goal one, goal two, goal three, goal four, and so on. Both who's responsible for doing it, both the due date and the both evidence of compliance. Supposed to be revised at the end of the year. When you finish your year, try to revise your operational plan. What's the achievements you have reached? And if you find some achievement, you have to document them and award the people shared in doing it. But if you find any defects, you have to study the reasons for the defects, the fail, why we failed in this one, try to modify and add it into the next operational plan for the next year. What are the related CBA standards talking about strategic plan? 
in the leadership LD number 15, standard LD number 15, is talking about uh, a strategic plan. And when we are uh, revising it now, we will find all of what explained in our presentation is mentioned here. Hostel leader work collaboratively to develop the hostel strategic plan. As we said, hostel leader, hostel uh, 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 manager or director with the uh, uh, medical director, with the quality director, with some staff, with the head of the department. 15.1, hostel leader work together to develop a strategic plan that guided by mission, vision, values. We discussed the mission, vision, value. Two, strategic plan is based on a comprehensive evaluation of the internal and the external environmental factor. As we said, assessing the internal and the external environment through, through the SWOT analysis or SWOOC analysis or SWOP analysis and PESTA analysis. PESTA analysis is something very close to SWOT analysis, but every letter here is referring for something. P for political issues. What are the political issues with and against your hostel? Uh, uh, e for economic, S for social, and T for the technology. Every one of them you have to uh, address what's uh, with the hostel and what against the hostel. What uh, can be taking benefit from them to the hostel and what will, could be against the hostel and you have to analyze them. 15.3 strategic plan address all clinical and non-clinical services and the progress. For example, we said that we will open a cardiac monitor clinical, but we said about patient safety culture clinical and non-clinical. You can say that we will uh, prepare and modify our file, fire alarm system, non-clinical, and so on. 15.4, the strategic plan spans over a period of three to five years and is reviewed on a regular basis. This means three to five years and uh, uh, reviewed every year means there is an operational plan and the operational plan is revised. What achieved, what not achieved, we have to do. 15.5, strategic plan including the broad goals and objectives. As we said, the goals are the broad one and the objectives are the small one. Required to fulfill the hostile missions. 15.6, goals and objectives are translated into operational plan. And as we said, operational plan for one year. With defined project, clearly delineated responsibilities and time. Who will do what when, as we discussed. 15.7, resources required for executing the operational plan are properly allocated. You have to mention the resources required. For example, we are uh, uh, needing to build a cardiac unit. What are the resources you need? You need a space, you need a building, you need a machines. So from where you got those resources and approved by hostel director and approved also by the cluster or directorate, 15.8. Operational plan are implemented and closely monitored. As we said, what achieved, what not. You can put some KPIs, KP performance indicator for them. For example, you said that through three months, I will do six presentation, as we said. So you have to tell me number of presentation done within three uh, months. If you found them five, you saw five over six, it's around 80%. Six over six, 100%. One of six, it's around 15 or 20 percent and so on so uh, operational plan are implemented and closely monitored for progress towards achieving the goals and the objective 15 8.1 key performance indicator are developed for each operational plan should have kpis two key performance indicator are reviewed regularly and the corrective action plan are taken as we said before 15.9, head of department develop annual departmental plan in line with the hostel strategic plan. For example, if I'm going to the nursing department, I should find a strategic plan with them matching with the strategic plan of the hostel. For example, nurses cannot put a project inside their plan against the strategic plan of the hostel. For example, the strategic plan said that we will spend 5 million reals through these years. Nursing cannot say that through this year we have to do a project for training or a center or something more than the uh, uh, budget required by the strategic plan of the hostel. 1510, the strategic plan is communicated to relevant staff, any staff, head of department, all of them, I have to find the strategic plan in all department and they have to know some uh, of the strategic plan, some of the contents of the strategic plan. 15.11, the strategic plan is approved by the governing body. After you finish it and approved by a committee inside the hostel, you have to uh, 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 approve it from the governing body in the, uh, in the uh, directorate or in the cluster.
By this slide, we finished our presentation. Thank you very much. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.